This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, everyone loves dogs, right? You've got the sniffing noses, the wagging tails, all the fur, and today that's what we're talking about. Pups. This is a trick-taking game from Bank Inc. It's for two to six players. It just came out. So let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. Now, Pups is a trick-taking card game where there's four different suits of four different colors, and each of those suits go from one to nine. Now, how trick-taking works in basic is they're played over multiple rounds. Each of those rounds are called tricks. One player will lead by playing a card of a certain suit. The next player, clockwise, has to play a card of this suit if they have one. So this player might have played a two of that green suit. The next player may have played a four and then the last player might have played a nine. All of these followed suit because they had to. The highest number that followed suit would win. So this player would win this trick. They would collect all these cards and they would put them face down in one single pile to show that they have won a trick. And then they would lead the next round. They might lead the new trick with this suit. And then the next player, let's say they play this. Now the next player doesn't have any blue suits, so they throw this seven, it is off suit. Anything that's off suit is known as sloughing, and usually you cannot win with this card. And then this is followed suit. Now, this person would win the trick because they are the highest in the suit that was led. Now, this one didn't, even though it was a higher number, did not win because it was not on suit. So this player would collect these cards. Now, I said this card usually cannot win. However, each round, a random card will be flipped up from the deck that's called the Alpha Dog for the round. This suit is known as what's called Trump. In this case, the six had won before without this Trump because it was the highest of the suit led. Now here, this player played Trump suit. This suit now trumps this. Now remember, you can't play this suit if you have the suit led, but if you didn't have any of these, someone threw a Trump suit, they would actually win this trick. In fact, even if this card were lower than the lead trick, this card would win because it's the only trump. But if there was a second trump played, again, they didn't have the suit, this would have won because it's the trump suit and it's the highest. So it always goes trump suit, highest, uh, and if there's no trump, it's the highest of the lead suit. And that's the basics of how the trick taking works in this game. Now I'm gonna walk you through a full round of how the game's played. The first thing that happens is we shuffle this deck and the alpha dog comes off the top. And again, we see what the alpha suit is. Every player is gonna now get seven cards that they will secretly hold in their hand for the round. Now at the beginning of the game, the leader is randomly uh, chosen and they get to choose a bid. You've got four choices here from cards, but actually you have seven choices. So you could bid that you win zero tricks. Now remember, each round there's going to be seven tricks because you're dealt seven cards. Now you're gonna bid how many of these based upon your cards that you're given and the alpha trump, you're going to figure out which ones, uh, how much you think you're gonna win. This could be zero. I'm gonna bid so I win exactly zero. That means you're not gonna win any tricks. This says at least one, at least two, at least three. But when you pull one of these cards, you could actually flip it over and put it in front of you and say exactly one. Notice that exactly has more treats. These are gonna be positive points. If you get at least one trick and you took this card, you'll get one point. If you take this and you don't get at least one trick, you will get uh, a penalty poo, which is basically minus. So it's reward treats or penalty poos. And all these cards here are double-sided. So you could do at least one, two, or three, or exactly uh, one, two, or three. And every time you go to exactly, essentially you're doubling the amount of treats, but it's the same amount of uh, pen penalty poos. After bidding, we would go to the showdown phase. Whoever took the highest bid card would lead the first trick. If two people took the highest bid card, then it would be the player who played it last. So let's say this player led with this, and this, then this, and then this. Well, this is not the alpha suit. Uh, and so this one would win this trick and that you would do the showdown like normal. But there's actually another suit in the game I haven't told you about yet. And they are called mutts. And they range anywhere from one to three. And there's uh, seven cards just like all the other suits. And what happens is you can play one mutt with uh, another card. So if this player had played the three, along with the three mutt, this card is now six. And this card would now take the trick because this was the lead suit and this card would take it. If for some reason you tie, 
then nobody wins the trick, but the person who caused the tie is the leader of the new trick. Now, since mutts are their own suit, you can lead with a mutt, and that means if anybody else has a mutt, they must also follow suit. And this is sometimes fun to draw out other people's cards and get the mutts out of their hand. In this case, this player would have won this. Of course, if they didn't have mutts, they could play anything else. And even sometimes you might want to lead with two mutts, because even though mutts can be played with any other suit as a wild, it can be played again with itself. This would have been a three suit of mutt. So after the seven uh, tricks are over, you're gonna see what happens. We're gonna go to the reward phase, and I'm gonna find out if we get rewarded with treats or penalty poop. So let's say I said I wanted to take at least two tricks, and let's say I did, I took at least two. This would go here. In subsequent rounds, they go like this so you can quickly see your score. Uh, if I did not take it, I would have had a penalty poo. So let's say first round I said at least two, and I got it. Let's say next one I said exactly one, and I got it. And so that's this is how it goes, and this is how you get your points. Now let's say it's the bidding round again of the next round. Before we were taking cards off the top of the deck and bidding. But you can actually redeem yourself. Earlier I got two penalty poos. And I want to redeem myself. So during my bid, instead of taking a card, I can take this out and use either side as my bid for this round. I could say at least two, or I could actually even flip it and say exactly two. If I get it right, hey, I've turned that negative into a positive. If I got it wrong, well, then it would go here again and I could try to redeem it again later. Now there was a bid card we haven't talked about too much yet. It's the exactly zero. If you have a weak hand or you think you can dodge all the tricks and you want to get zero, you would bid zero. If you did not get zero tricks, this would just go back in the pile. If you did, this gets added here. Now it's no points, but what happens is uh, in a future round, let's say I the next round I bid, I wanted to get exactly two tricks. At the end of the round, I only got one. I can turn this in to gain a bonus trick. So this gets turned in and I would have gotten exactly two, otherwise I would have failed and that's how you use the exactly zero bid. Also during the reward phase, after everyone has figured out whether they get reward treats or penalty poos, the person who has uh, the most tricks that round gets the top dog bonus. It's just an extra point. Now if nobody, uh, if, if somebody ties and nobody has the only most amount, one of these top dog cards gets discarded off the deck because this acts as a timer for the game. And then the person who has the most treats total in their pile will be the leader of the next round. And treats, the, the total treats is basically treats minus the poos. So we have four, five, seven, minus two is five. If I had the most, I'd be the leader. If I was tied, we would just draw a card off the pup's deck and whoever has the highest number uh, is, uh, would be the leader of the next uh, round. Now the game will continue until one of two things happens. Either the last of these top dog cards are given out, the game will end, or if any one of these three bidding piles are depleted during the bidding phase, that's the last, that will be the last round at the end of it. You then count up your total treats, as I mentioned before, and whoever has the most is the winner. In case of a tie, the player who collects the most top dog cards is the true winner. Now since this is the final art in the game, I want to show it off to you to show you that every card has different artwork. Look at this, we have a Cocker Spaniel, Scottish Terrier, Collie, Jack Russell Terrier, Labrador Retriever, the Beagle, the Bulldog, the Poodle, and the Golden Retriever in this suit. And in this suit we have the Great Dane, the Bernese Mountain Dog, Australian Shepherd, the Saint Bernard, the Old English Sheepdog, the Husky, the Welsh Corgi, the German Shepherd, and the Border Collie. And in this suit, we have the English Bull Terrier, the Akita, the Commodore, the Pit Bull, the Chow Chow, the Bull Mastiff, the Rottweiler, the Giant Schnauzer, and the Doberman Pitcher. And here we have the Boston Terrier, the French Bulldog, the Shih Tzu, the Chihuahua, the Dachshund, the Maltese, the Pomeranian, the Yorkshire Terrier, and the Pug. And here are the three different mutts that you see in the game. Now I want to point out that the game is colorblind friendly, meaning all the suits have an icon that you can use to distinguish it if you can't see the colors, but thematically it makes sense too, because here we have lap dogs. These are all guard dogs, these are family dogs, and these are working dogs. Really cool. There are also some promo cards that are available on the publisher's website on bankinc.com and essentially gives you legendary dogs. It gives you a number 10, which would be the highest of each of the suits of the different dogs. It also gives you the underdog, which is a plus four mutt. This card acts as a different colored back than all the others. And this would be their eighth card. Whoever has the least amount of total treats at the beginning of a round gets this card as an additional card. It just helps them win more tricks and sort of catch up. 
And these don't come with the base game, they came in what's called the alpha version of when this game was kickstarted, but you can get them on BigInk.com. Now there's many trick taking games out there and more and more come out every year. So why is this one different? Should it still come out? Should it be in your collection? I would argue absolutely. First of all, the theme is different. The pups theme is awesome, especially the way they did with all the artwork looks really cool. The fact that they have those different dogs, the working dogs, the guard dogs, things like that. It's just a fun family theme that I really like and I think other people will too. But there are definitely some mechanisms different here that I think warrant it being in your collection. Uh, the, the way that the, the pups, first of all, those are really cool. Uh, the fact that you can, you know, hey, someone throws the best card of, say, guard dog number nine, and you throw like an eight and a two uh, with the pups. And you can add those to your hand, uh, to, your, you know, to, to, to what you play, and, and go, go over someone that didn't think you'd be able to do so. That's really cool. You can also play them as their own suit. So you can play two pups, which is cool. You can lead with those to draw everybody else's pups out, which is interesting. So I like that aspect of it. I also like that if you, ever, if you have a couple of pups and you start to play those each hand, that you can actually change how many hands... Uh, how many cards are going to be in that round and people don't always always know how many cards when they're bidding how many tricks are there going to be this round because if people have a lot of pups they can rush to the end of the round which is really cool i like the bidding mechanism the fact that you can go a little bit less more conservative and just do at least a certain amount or you can really go all in and say i'm going to get exactly this and you get twice as many points for that and i like that for more one, uh, many reasons one is it gives you more flexibility number two it allows people that haven't played a lot of trick-taking games to be more forgiving, uh, but if you're a gamer, you can really go for it. I play this with my wife, two players, it even works well that, uh, with just two, and you know, I just said to myself, I'm gonna have to, I'll just play exact bids only, just for myself, and, you know, sort of do that. And she could bid whatever she wanted. And she was able to beat me, even though I was trying really hard to beat her, if I played exact, she didn't. So it allowed me to play a game and play it as hard as I could, but still not beat her, which was really cool. It was really close. Uh, and so that was fun too. And I like the fact that when you bid, if you get something wrong, bad, you know, wrong, and you get the poos there, that later on you can redeem yourself and get those and bring those back up. And sometimes that's a big swing. If you take a negative and you do an exact bid, that's a huge swing sometimes. And points can really get you from being in last place to first place. Speaking of being in first place, I like how whoever's in first place at the end of the round has to bid first. It gives more information to other people, which makes their bidding a little bit easier. So again, there's a lot of interesting things here. It all ties together really well, and it's an excellent trick-taking game. Uh, one I love a lot, and because of that, I'm keeping it in my, in my gaming library. So let's induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.